This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. So there are six things that established, or that, that Jesus indicated that established his authority. When we get done with those six things, we're going to come back and say, now, those same six things establish your authority for ministry. And we'll look at how you apply those in your life. <coughs> so, the first one is, in establishing Jesus' authority, is that whatever Jesus did was God's will. In verse 19, he says that. Whatever he does is God's will. Everything that he does is God's will. Now, Jesus said on a number of occasions that all he was out to do was to accomplish the will of God the Father. He indicated that. What he was saying was, I have my authority from heaven. I am doing what the Father has told me to do. My authority comes from heaven, not from anybody here on earth and even not from my own desires, but from what God the Father, in other words, what heaven has established that I need to do. John 6, 38, he said, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. He made that very clear. Later in John chapter 8, uh, starting with verse 28, So Jesus said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, and of course, remember, he's speaking about his crucifixion here. They didn't completely understand it, but that's what he was saying. When you've lifted him up, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing of my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always, I always do the things that are pleasing to him. So Jesus said that he was out. That was, he was, that was what he was doing. He was there to accomplish the will of God, the Father. That's all he was doing. That's all that he was about. And even in death, Jesus was all about accomplishing the will of God, the Father. Do you remember when he was in the garden and he was praying? The Bible says in Luke chapter 22, beginning with verse 41, And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. What he was saying is, I am all about doing God's will. That is the focus of my life. It's, there's nothing about my own desires and, and, and wants. Not that his desires and wants were contrary to God the Father. But what he was saying is it's all about being obedient and being faithful and being true to the will of heaven. What it is that God wants to establish in my life and through my life. So whatever Jesus did was in God's will. Now in verse 20, God is not finished revealing himself. He says that. He said, you know, God isn't done. He, you know, there was a belief that God had already revealed himself through the law, and that was it, and there was nothing else. There are people even to this day that say, well, you know, God is no, more, no longer revealing himself. We have the Bible, and so God is not revealing himself anymore. We'll see that that's not true. But that's really, that was what he was saying here, was that, that God is not finished revealing himself. That's what verse 20 is saying, that God continues to reveal himself, and now he's revealing himself through Jesus. In Luke chapter 10, verse 21, look at what uh, Jesus said. I love this. This is so cool because it's so applicable for us. In Luke chapter 10, verse 21, in that same hour, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit, and then he said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, such was your gracious will. God's will is to reveal himself to those who are like children, basically. Not to the wise and the understand, you know, the, those who have great, not to the seminarians. What he was saying is, you haven't revealed yourself to the people who think they know everything. You know, the great students of theology. I always got tickled when I was in seminary reading all of these, these big books by the great theologians. And some of them had, obviously had some great insight, but a lot of, it, a lot of them were so pompous. I am so intelligent, and I'm going to tell you what to think about God. And then I think to myself, dude, you're dead. You really know God now, don't you? Um, you know, the, the thing that's so amazing to me is how God reveals himself to the simple-minded. You know, to those who are, and I don't mean simple-minded in, in the mentally challenged sense. I'm saying to those of us who are just willing to accept and take a look at the word and say, God, it's up to you. There are things I don't understand, but I'm willing to let you reveal those things to me. And God says, okay. Has God ever said to you, okay, he does. He wants to reveal himself to those who, who come to him with just that simple um, 
faith that just says, I don't completely understand it. I'm not even sure what to believe at this point, but God, it's up to you. I'm trusting you for it. And so God is not finished revealing himself.